Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Friday, July 23rd, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, there's no announcements for today on Friday. I am actually down in Delaware on vacation visiting my mother-in-law. Uh, it's her birthday tomorrow, and so we're celebrating her. It's our first time with her since the COVID pandemic, uh, first time down in Delaware with her since the start of the pandemic. So we're very excited about that and um, just ask your prayers for our traveling to and from. We're coming home tomorrow and uh, we'll be with you, of course, on Sunday, on Sunday morning. Tomorrow, Saturday, yeah, the 24th, is Jared Tassone's birthday and Jason Knapp's birthday. Happy birthday, Jared. Happy birthday, Jason. You're both wonderful guys, and we uh, love having you as part of our fellowship. God bless you both. May you know that you are loved by God and uh, loved by us. I pray you have a great, great birthday tomorrow. Of course, on Sunday the 25th, we have our Sunday morning service at 9 a.m. here at Arlington Reformed Church. Also, Lord willing, it'll be on live stream and Facebook Live. This past Sunday, uh, the, the internet was down in the entire building. It's back up now, obviously, as I'm posting these videos. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll pray for nothing to go wrong. That's been challenging tech for the last few weeks. Uh, and then there's Deeper at 7 o'clock on Sunday evening. Well, on the Sunday, this past Sunday, I preached out of Zechariah chapter 1, verses 7 through 17. And at the end of this passage, there's this great saying, great statement. The Lord says, my cities shall again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. He will comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem. Zion and Jerusalem are two names for the same city. Um, what does it mean for God to choose Jerusalem? Uh, Throughout the Bible, we are taught about God's sovereign choice, that God chooses according to his will. He doesn't choose uh, according to who's the best or the most moral or the, the, the uh, most obedient. He doesn't choose according to who's the best looking. He doesn't choose according to uh, strength. Uh, rather, God chooses according just to his free will and his free choice. Now, in the Christian tradition, there are uh, multiple different ways to understand the choice of God. Some folks see God as the only being in the universe with free will, that God in, is that God's choice and God's sovereignty extend to even cover our choices and our uh, free will such that our free will is is entirely bound up in God's choices that God chooses for us um, and there's but I think there's an alternate way to look at this and I think it's a helpful way um, this is the way that I often look at the choice of God um, we when we think of God's sovereign choice we often think of it in terms of salvation I've not, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you, God says. Um, uh, but I think when you look at the passages where it talks about God choosing a people or God choosing individuals, uh, it's, I think, almost entirely, maybe even entirely, instances where God is talking about choosing people to be instruments of his salvation not necessarily to be recipients of his salvation. Um, I do believe that God in his sovereign will uh, makes sure that every person has access to the gospel in some way, shape, or form to some extent. That God uh, is merciful and gracious and, and puts the gospel, uh, the, the call to salvation in front of every person. And I believe that every person has responsibility to respond to that call. But does God choose for you? Does God choose for you? Again, this is an area of debate in the Christian church, but my best understanding is that God doesn't choose for you. That it's only because of his grace that you have a choice in the first place. That God uh, gives you ahead of time his grace sufficient to allow you to choose. Uh, and our choices often uh, 
virtually uniformly. Our choices are bound up in sin, uh, and God, but God graciously extends the ability for us to choose uh, to respond to him. Uh, but when it says that God chooses us, I believe that God's choice of us is not a choice for salvation. He doesn't say, Danish, you'll be saved, but Harvey, you'll not. He doesn't say, you know, Karina, you'll be saved, uh, but you, Madeline, you're not. Uh, rather, uh, so he's not choosing some to save and some to damn. But rather, what God is choosing is God chooses people to be instruments of his salvation, to be part of his salvation plan for the world. God chooses Israel to be his instruments of salvation. Through Israel, the, uh, the Messiah would come who would bring salvation to the world. And here, it says that God will again choose Jerusalem. It had looked as though God's salvation plan was derailed by the capture of Jerusalem, by the destruction of the royal line, and by the destruction of the temple. But God is saying, no, 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 my plan is still on track. My, my plan for salvation of the world is still going strong, and I'm still choosing Jerusalem to be the place where that salvation will come. I think that's how we should best understand this question of God's choice. God chooses us. God chooses, I think, all who will respond to him in faith uh, to be the people on whom he gives his salvation. But he also, when he gives a sovereign choice here, he's, what he's saying is, he's specifically saying, I'm choosing you to be instruments of my salvation, to bring my salvation to all the earth. Here he's talking about Jerusalem. Of course, many times in the New Testament, he's talking about us as Christians and even as individual Christians, that God chooses us to bring his salvation to the world. Hey, brothers and sisters, let's be God's instruments of salvation to the world uh, as God has chosen us to do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Lord, it's Friday. That's a wonderful day. It means the, the weekend is upon us. Lord, I pray that you'll bless uh, every person within the sound of my voice and help them to know that uh, they can respond to your call, uh, your gospel call, to respond to you in salvation, to respond to you in, in faith and trust. Lord, I pray that you'll bless uh, Jared Tassone and Jason Knapp on their birthdays. Please uh, encourage them and strengthen them. May they know that they are loved by you and loved by your people. And Lord, I pray for your, your many blessings on them. Be with us on Sunday at 9 o'clock for our Sunday morning service. May we worship you in spirit and in truth and bring us back together in safety for the next uh, daily devotional video on Monday. Lord, we love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday for Sunday morning service. Come on down in person. It's great here at 9 o'clock. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you for the daily devotional video on Monday.